coming up the best way to choose exactly the right tow vehicle. And just for a change, let us use a rational numbers based approach. Shall we? I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Australian new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. I get a heap of inquiry about towing, choosing the right vehicle for towing. And frankly, much of it is not based in the domain of rationality. I'm not talking about casting for one flew over the cuckoo's nest too or anything. I'm just talking about an extreme vagueness when it comes to the kind of vehicle you want and the kind of thing that you want to tow. Mate, I just need a vehicle to tow a big van or a medium van. Whatever the friggin' hell that is. Here's a question that is kind of related from a guy named Steve, and I would have to say that he's done more thinking than average, so his inquiry is a cut above, and yet he is still digging a hole for himself. Check it out. Currently, I am looking at a Kia Sportage SI 2-litre diesel automatic as I have the following toys. Fishing boat, approximately 1.5 tonnes, and camper trailer, approximately 1.2 tonnes. I also occasionally do a bit of beach driving and light four-wheel driving, nothing radical, as well as an occasional trip interstate. So, based on that, I reckon the Kia will fit my requirements. The only concern is the towing capacity of the Kia at 1.9 tonnes. Your comments would be appreciated. Frankly, I think our correspondent Steve is about to dig a hole for himself and we'll help him to get out of it a bit soon. But there's two scenarios here, right? There's Steve's scenario where he's got the toys and he needs a vehicle to tow them. And then there's the other scenario where you've got the vehicle and you need to choose appropriate toys that don't blow the towing limits. Speaking of which, there's more than one of those. There's the towing capacity, which is the all up, fully loaded weight of the trailer that you can tow, sometimes called the aggregate trailer mass and occasionally referred to as the GVM or the gross vehicle mass of the trailer. That's fully loaded with all of your worldly positions positions and possessions aboard, ready to go out there and explore, I don't know, whatever, the ocean, the great outback, who knows. And then there's another limit that Steve hasn't considered, which is about to bite him on the ass, I feel, in my water, and that would be the static tow ball download limit, which is a bunch of big engineering words, or medium-sized engineering words, what it really means is, in that heavily loaded trailer configuration, how hard is the trailer pressing down like that on the tow ball? And that's kind of important too. So in the case of the Sportage, there's 1,900 kilos of towing capacity, which is fantastic. It's excessive to what Steve needs to tow, so that's nice and safe. But unfortunately, there's only 100 kilos of static tow ball download capacity, and you can't exceed that either. And unfortunately, most trailers in Australia are about 10% of the total weight of the trailer is on the ball. And that means, in the case of the 1.5 tonne thingo that Steve wants to tow, he's going to be maybe 50 kilos overloaded on the tow ball download capacity. And there are consequences if you drive out there like that. Number one, and this is kind of important, if you get stopped on the side of the road by the registration dudes and they weigh your vehicle and the trailer and it's overloaded, then guess what? Apart from a fine, you are going to be stopped out there in the middle of Shitsville and you're not going to be able to proceed with the trailer still coupled. So that's bad. And number two, even more seriously, is that if you drive overloaded, you will void the warranty. And if you crash overloaded, then there might be administrative or negligence type legal implications with that. You might be in a fight with your insurance company about whether or not you're gonna be covered. And I don't know about you, but I think it's far safer just never to go there. Let's talk about 
proportionality and being out of step here in Australia compared with the rest of the world. See, taking our example first, the trailer manufacturers here, boats, caravans, camper trailers, whatever, anything heavy, they will specify a gross vehicle mass of that vehicle, fully loaded, and then they will kind of design the orientation of the axles and the tow hitch so that 10% of that load is vertically down on the tow ball of the towing vehicle. It's common to see a loaded van at 2,000 kilos impose 200 kilos vertically down on the tow ball. 10%, okay? And you might think, what's the problem with that? And in principle, I would say, well, not really very much, because some download on the tow ball is a fantastic idea, because that leads to greater dynamic stability when you are actually out there towing something heavy. So that's good. Our problem is being out of step with the rest of the world. So in Europe, for example, and I think North America as well, although if you are watching in Retardistan, and I am wrong on this, please do let me know in the comments feed below. So the rest of the world, subject to Retardistani correction, uses 5%. So a 2,000 kilo trailer, fully loaded, will impose 100 kilos on the tow ball. And this is a problem for us because vehicles are designed for the rest of the world. We have very small sales volumes in the context of global sales, and it doesn't really make sense for them to make sweeping R&D changes on the production line just to suit us. And that's why it's so common to see vehicles like Sorento and Santa Fe and the Sportage diesel with respectively 2,000, 2,000 and 1,900 kilos of tow capacity, all coupled to a standard tow ball download capacity of 100 kilos, which is a bit of a bastard. If you've got a 2,000 kilo trailer and it imposes 200 kilos, you cannot tow it with one of those vehicles. So hats off to Hyundai with the Santa Fe, one of my favorite seven seat SUVs, because they've got a thing called a genuine load assist kit that pumps up the download capacity. And essentially, that load assist kit is just a set of variable rate rear springs. It's quite affordable, it's fully warranted, it's R&D'd. What they do is they install these variable rate springs and they pump up the download capacity to at least 150 kilos. Now it's not the 10%, it's not the 2,200 scenario, but at least it is some way there. So if you've got a 1,500 kilo trailer that imposes 150 kilos, genuine load assist kit, you're off to the races, which is fantastic. The problem is for everyone else, you will have to upgrade the vehicle to some spectacular tow capacity just to meet the tow ball download capacity, and to me, that seems like a real shame. My number one piece of advice on the practicality stakes here is measure the weights of your trailer. Do not guess them and don't read them off a spec sheet because you buy a trailer and it doesn't matter what it is. It can be a car trailer or a boat or a caravan or a camper trailer, whatever it is that you tow, it's gonna have some specs attached but that's not going to really represent what the trailer weighs when you load it up with your stuff. And that's what you really need to know. So the two things you need to know, the aggregate trailer mass, fully loaded with all of your stuff aboard, you need to know that. And then you really need to know the tow ball download in that loaded configuration. So how do you do that? Because most people's bathroom scales don't cope with that. The first thing I'd suggest you do is go to Google and type in the following search term, nearest public way bridge. And Google will come back with a bunch of results. And basically a public way bridge is a big set of bathroom scales for your vehicle. And what you do is you just go there and if you don't know how to do this, you can talk to the dude who runs the way bridge. Alternatively, you can just prime yourself up like this. The first job is drive onto the way bridge and park your trailer dead center and then decouple the vehicle and drive off and then just weigh your fully loaded trailer. And it kind of goes without saying that you have to load up your trailer in the lead up to this event as heavily as you will ever load it when you head off, I don't know, into the great Australian 
And then what you do, once you've got this fully loaded weight, that tells you the GVM of the fully loaded trailer. That's kind of important. What you do is you back the vehicle onto the weigh bridge, you couple up, and then you inch the vehicle off the weigh bridge just so the vehicle is off the weigh bridge, but the trailer is still on. And basically, you weigh it again in exactly that configuration. So still coupled, vehicle off the weigh bridge, trailer, bang on, okay? And what that does is it takes the tow ball download out of the total weight that you just measured. So you get one heavy load, which is the first one you measured, one slightly, load, one, one slightly lower load, which is the lighter one that you just measured, and you subtract the light one from the heavy one, and you get the static tow ball download in that fully loaded condition. And then that will tell you, if you're on the hunt for the vehicle, exactly how heavy the heaviest trailer is and exactly what tow ball download it imposes in that state. And then all you do is you go to the various vehicle specs and you have a look at those two things and they're specified, they're both specified, and then you will know that you can tow that thing with these vehicles and not so much with these other ones that perhaps you were considering. My strong advice to you if you're going to engage in regular heavy towing is do not tow too close to the limit because any time you operate a vehicle near the limit of its capability, the wear rate increases and there are more constraints on how you can use it. Dynamic stability is closer to the point of compromise. And yes, they do have factors of safety built into all sorts of vehicle specifications. My advice to you, however, is to be conservative if you want to tow something really heavy. And I'd like to take a moment just to talk about these 4x4 utes with the 3.5 tonne tow capacity. Because that is a bit of a sham, really, and that's just there so that they can compete with other vehicles, notionally, in the spec sheet, with vehicles like the Toyota Land Cruiser 200, which does have very serious tow capacity, and it's probably the best vehicle out there for 3.5 tonnes of towing. What the utes do, however, is, and you have to understand that there are all sorts of specifications. We've already spoken about the aggregate trailer mass, the all up fully loaded weight of the trailer and the tow ball download that goes with that. But there's often another specification for heavy towing as well, which is called GCM or gross combination mass. Now that is the total all up weight of the vehicle and everything in the vehicle and the trailer and everything in the vehicle. So quite often with these 4x4 utes and the 3.5 ton tow capacity, if you hitch up a 3.5 ton trailer to one of those utes, you are going to be severely compromised in the context of the payload that you can put into the vehicle. And if you'll excuse me for one second, I'll just read from my notes here because I can't remember all the numbers. But if you're looking at a Ford Ranger Wildtrak, one of the most popular 4x4 utes in the country, and you think, I can hook up my three and a half ton boat caravan, whatever, to that. I've got a plutonium implosion bomb and I need to take it somewhere to blow something up. That could be a bad idea. Not just the bomb is a bad idea, but the three and a half tons is a bad idea as well, potentially because you'll be sailing so close to the limits. And here they are, okay? Three and a half tons on the towing, 6,000 kilograms is the absolute limit for the gross combination mass. And then there's a curb weight for the ute of 2,290 kilos. It's hard to keep all the numbers in your head, I know, but if you add the 2290 kilos curb weight of the ute to the three and a half tons of the trailer, you're gonna get 5,790 kilos. And that means you only have the capacity to carry 210 kilos in the ute. And I'm not talking about bricks in the back. I'm talking about passengers, their luggage, a bull bar, a winch, whatever it is that you are packing in your ute, you've got to limit it to 210 kilos. And call me old fashioned here, but to me, that doesn't seem 
particularly realistic. There's one more thing about vehicles that we really should touch on here because there's been an explosion of different notionally automatic vehicle transmissions. There's CVTs, continuously variable transmissions, and there's DCTs or DSGs, they're sometimes called direct shift gearboxes or dual clutch transmissions, both the same thing. In my view, these types of transmissions are just not as suited to heavy towing as conventional automatics. And if you want to round this right out as well, automatics are superior to manuals as well when it comes to heavy towing. Now I'm not talking about occasional use of a box trailer down to the hardware store, the landscape supply joint, or getting rid of your stuff at the tip. Not talking about that, talking about repeated heavy towing near the limit. DSGs, DCTs, CVTs, they have proven historically not to be as durable in this routine heavy towing capacity. So if you are thinking about doing that, you know, the big grey nomad lap of Australia through the outback, whatever, then I'd be taking those kinds of transmissions with a grain of salt because they don't seem to be as durable as a conventional automatic. Let's change horses now and talk about the reverse scenario, which is you've got the vehicle and you need to find a suitable trailer, a boat, caravan, camper trailer, whatever, that does not blow the vehicle's tow capacities. And in a sense, this can be even more challenging. And the main problem you will be up against is this 5% download bizzo that pertains in most other markets around the world. So what I'd strongly suggest you do is if you are going to buy a brand new trailer from a manufacturer, point out that you have this problem. In Steve's case, let's say he owns the Sportage, 1,900 kilos for the diesel, but 100 kilos hard limit on the tow ball. Talk to the manufacturer about that, and they may be able to accommodate you to some degree. In a camper trailer, they may be able to move individual heavy components around somewhat. For example, a water tank, whatever. They might be able to omit the water tank, and you might get a few jerrys and carry them, I don't know, in the ute or something. So there's potential solutions there. They might also be able to nudge the positions of the axles. I don't know how much design flexibility individual manufacturers have or what they might charge you for that. But unless you come to grips with that at the trailer end, it's gonna be almost impossible to upgrade on your own the tow ball download limit. You'll need an engineer and a certificate and you'll have to take it to the rego mob and you will drown in red tape before you get even 100 metres closer to that beautiful, pristine Australian outback, yes! where just about every other living thing within 10 kilometres of your campsite will kill you. Let's talk about engineering for yourself, unwittingly perhaps, a suboptimal result. And let's say, hypothetically, you've got this trailer, a boat, caravan, whatever, that weighs 1,800 kilos to 2,000 kilos, which is a pretty heavy thing, but not in the context of vehicle tow capacity broadly. Plenty of vehicles will cope with that. But many of those that will, will not cope with 180 to 200 kilos vertically down on the tow ball. So you're going to have to take many of those vehicles off the table. And that means that to tow something in that sort of broad tow capacity range, you're gonna to have to step up to a vehicle like a Pajero Sport. And I recommend Pajero Sport all the time. It's one of my favorite vehicles of that class, which would be a hastily converted Triton Ute. Mitsubishi puts a wagon back on them and does a few other tweaks as well, like coil sprung rear end and an eight speed auto transmission. It's got awesome off-road capability and heavy tow capacity, yes! But there is a dark side to doing that, isn't there? And the dark side would be on-road refinement takes a hit because of the nature of engineering compromise. You can't pump up the hardcore stuff and leave the refinement stuff around town and on the highway where it is. So you pump this up, that goes down. And that's the fundamental difference between something like a Pajero Sport and something like a Mazda CX-8 or 
Kia Sorento or a Hyundai Santa Fe. So you want to think really carefully about this. And that's one of the reasons I'm such a fan of Santa Fe for this moderate to heavy towing because they can install that genuine load assist kit. So you get a bit more envelope in that moderate to heavy tow capacity department. And you might be able to tweak the download on your trailer by inching the boat back a little bit if the trailer has the capacity to do that. Or you might be able to move some of your own stuff around inside something like a caravan, move it more centrally or even better further back to take some of the static load off the front end of the van and therefore off the tow ball as well. So if you can do that, what you will end up with in practice is a vehicle that's far more refined and civilised for the vast majority of driving that you probably do around town and on the highway without the trailer out the back, and it will cope with your trailer for those times that you are towing, rather than end up with an overkill tow capacity scenario that you kind of need but you never exploit in, in terms of its full capacity, and then you've got to take a hit on the refinement for the 48 weeks of the year that you're just using it for family transport. So that's something to think about as well, I think. I suspect some of you will really not appreciate this suggestion, but I intend to make it anyway. Just bear in mind that I don't care. It's a character flaw. Instead of towing the heaviest trailer that you possibly can with your fine vehicle, how about towing one a little bit lighter than that? There's a thought. There's a couple of really good reasons for doing this, okay? Number one, is you'll be less close to the point of extreme compromise on worst case scenario days. Speaking of which, we're having one of those at the moment. Here in beautiful Shitsville on the outskirts of Sydney, it's four o'clock, is it? Yes, four o'clock in the afternoon and about 45 degrees C last time I looked. Thanks very much for that weather. Very unpleasant. So imagine if you are towing a three and a half ton trailer with your ute up a very steep hill, you're back to third or fourth gear or something, you're doing 80 k's an hour, you're really slogging it out. Your transmission and your cooling system overall, they're really close to the point of compromise because this is a kind of worst case scenario. Massive loads, high engine outputs to get the job done, and severely limited heat rejection capability of the radiator thanks to the ambient conditions. Imagine how much easier it would be from a fundamental physics point of view just to be towing two tons up the hill instead. Now I know it's great to have a big boat and a big van and all of that stuff, but imagine being out in the outback with that big van and then having a little shower of rain overnight with 100 k's of slippery, muddy dirt road to go to get back to the blacktop. You drove in and it was dry and everything was hunky-dory and then it rained and this is going to be a challenge, okay? It's much less of a challenge with 1,500 kilos less of whatever out the back. So I'd suggest if you possibly can get away with it, Get the smaller van because it's just going to be easier. You probably don't need all of those bells and whistles that you've been lusting after in the brochure. Think in terms of what you actually need to get the job done as opposed to keeping up with the Joneses in the caravan park or whatever. Let's talk briefly about horses for courses. And by that I mean fitting the right tow vehicle into the application and the duration of the towing excursions that you plan. Because there's a big difference between becoming a grey nomad over here and doing that big lap of Australia for some indeterminate period of time, and on the other hand being a salaried family dude who goes on four weeks annual leave a year and maybe two other long weekends you go out there with your boat, caravan, camper trailer, whatever. If you're in this category over here, okay, you might only make three trips out there and three trips back, total of six days on the road towing, 359 days of the year remaining. You're just gonna be a normal dude driving around the suburbs and out on the highway, no trailer, okay? There's a big difference in choosing the right vehicle between those two camps. Over here, I'd be erring on the side of ultra conservatism on the towing front. And by that, I mean I'd be getting a vehicle that was overkill 
in terms of the trailer that you intend to tow. Whereas over here, I'd be towing the trailer with a vehicle that was kind of only just capable of towing that trailer. 2,000 limit, 150 on the tow ball, and as long as you're just inside that with your trailer, you're gonna be fine over here and you really will benefit from the additional refinement that vehicles like this offer you. Whereas over here, living out of a van continuously, doing that dirt roads and all of that kind of stuff in the outback, I really suggest you go for conservatism and coming in comfortably under the limit. I'd like to thank you sincerely for sticking with me to the end of this unplugged video on choosing the right tow vehicle. The final point I'd make here, the glaring omission, that elephant in the room, yes, of all of this, is you and me, the human component, often the weakest link in the process. See, I find it absolutely amazing that no special qualifications are required for heavy towing. Not so much the trailer to the landscape supplies or something, but towing a car with a car or towing a big fat boat or something. No training? I mean, really? You could spend 30 years driving Granny around in her Corolla and then win the lottery and buy a Ranger Wild Track and the biggest boat it can tow, three and a half tons, and then you can set off on the highway Ticking time bomb is the expression that comes to mind. So apart from getting the vehicle right and the trailer right and getting them all set up to work together just fine, which is a specialist job in and of itself, I'd suggest that you need to tweak yourself and your driving capabilities. And this is not a training course on how to tow. And some people think that the most complex thing about towing a big fat boat or something is backing it down the boat ramp and not drowning the vehicle. Au contraire, I'd suggest it's dealing with all of those driving hazards at normal suburban and highway speeds. And at the very least, I strongly suggest that you drive ultra conservatively. Whatever speed you think you can drive around that bend, knock it back a bit. And however much clearance you think you need between you and that vehicle in front, knock it back a bit. It really does pay especially if you've got something behind you that weighs as much of the vehicle that you are, that weighs sorry as much as the vehicle that you are sitting in then i would strongly suggest that you treat it with the respect it deserves and the final point on all of this i guess is even though you're towing you still have rear vision mirrors and the rest of the driving public still exists so if you look in your rear vision mirror one day and you noticed a conga line of 3,000 vehicles behind you, or even 10, then why don't you do the diplomatic, ethical, considerate thing and pull over and let them pass? Because no matter how conservatively you're driving and how safe and responsible you think you're being, all of those drivers behind you, they just want to get going at normal highway speeds and you are just adding to the general stress level out there if you don't just move over and let them do it thanks for watching